Hey guys, Nick Sarity back here again today with some more loom. Uh, we're back here in the field after we've just gone through with the shepherd. So, uh, yeah, let's just keep going. If I can figure out where my mouse is. <laughs> really hate that this game doesn't save, so I have to play it all in one sitting. And it's about an hour and a half to two hour game, depending on if you do actually know what you're doing. But, yeah. Hello there. Who said that? I did. My name is Fleece, first chosen of the Guild of Shepherds. I wish we had time to chat a while and trade some tales, but we have got a serious problem on our hands. What sort of trouble are you having? It seems we've a dragon nearby who has an enormous appetite for fresh mutton. We breed our sheep for extra whiteness, so we cannot keep them on the meadows. She can spot them miles away. By now, the dragon has carried off so many that we may not be able to fill the cleric's order. The clerics? I just saw the bishop at the glassmaker's. Bishop Mandible? He placed the order for 10,000 sheep. 10,000 sheep? That's enough to feed an army. Yes, that had occurred to us too. You noticed our increased patrol in the forest. We'll deliver the sheep to the clerics if we can, but we won't trust them. I suppose fighting the dragon will be out of the question. Only a mage can save us. I see you've noticed my little friend. She doesn't look at all well. She isn't, and my songs of healing don't seem to be bringing her much comfort. I wish I were better with him. Poor Fleece. The flock is out to pasture. You'll find them there. Go forth, wizard, and may you return safely to our fold. Yes, I, I understand. This is a very strange, trippy game. The, uh, the sheep were not there when I just walked through a minute ago, but they are now. I find it's better not to question these things. We'll just turn the sheep green, you know. Sorry, that scream gets me every time. So beautiful. Well, what have we here? Oh, that's what comes of being in such a blazing hurry, I guess. I thought you looked a bit scrawny. Oh, why, you'd hardly make a decent kindling. Have you no manners, lad? Stop staring at me. Oh, was I staring? <laughs> so sorry. Oh, don't mind me, love. I'll get rather crotchety on an empty stomach. D does that mean you're going to incinerate me, then? Incinerate you? Oh, my! Aren't you the foxy one? <laughs> I haven't created any fire since my last mating season. <laughs> and you don't want to know how many centuries ago that was. <laughs> no, 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 that's much too much heat for me these days. You mean you can't breathe fire? Can't? Let's just say I won't. Just between you and me, love. The stuff gives me the eebie-jeebies. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to feel awful, but it has to be done. the way you found it. Now!
watch this one. become fire. You haven't heard the last of me, you cheeky brat! God, I feel so awful for having to do that to her, but there is no way to progress in the game without it, so... Oh well. It might, it might, it might help to point at something first. Now I can see. The Book of Patterns liked to call this night vision, but um, considering there's not really light in much of this cave, I'm not sure how it could be considered night vision so much as maybe like a mage light. Bobbin, Bobbin, come back here. Yeah, I don't know how this, these caves work, but they work, I guess. Eh. Guess I won't be going back that way. Reflection. Okay. You guys can remember way back to uh, how the first ever scrying sphere was lost because of the dragon. Guess what guys, we found it. And that keeps coming back up, but that's literally the end of the game. Bishop Mandible. What in the world is he up to? You know what? I think we're gonna actually just... Let the scrying sphere be lost in this cave. It doesn't need to come out. If anyone ever finds it anyway. Like I said, I don't know how these caves work, but somehow they do.
Oh, I'm sorry. I missed a beautiful comment on how uh, repair costs must be spiraling. But at least, you know, I already knew that, so you guys get to hear it from me. I keep forgetting that there are interesting, entertaining things that you guys could listen to here, but oh well. These grave markers are forged from solid bronze. It must be heavy. What's that? Your music woke me up. Oh, sorry. Oh, not to worry. I'm Rusty, Rusty Nailbender. I'm Bobbin Threadbare, of the Weavers. Weavers, eh? Our folk are blacksmiths. I'm supposed to be getting firewood for the master, but this plateau is being picked cleaner than a new blade. Come over here. That's us down there, the forge. That's what we call it. I've heard you weavers don't get out much. What's your business here? I've been looking for a flock of swans. Swans? No. No swans around here. Oh, say, all this talk has made me sleepy. At least we don't have to explain this time that they're oh, Let me know if you find your <laughs> swans. Oh. And I, I do have to say, I love that their forge thing looks like an anvil. It's beautiful. Oh! Who are you? Just me, a friendly stranger. This is a private guild, my strange young friend. The gate only opens for members. Well, now we go back to Rusty. Forget if Bobbin says anything interesting. He's fast asleep. Aw, precious. Well, look at that, we magically changed appearances. It's honestly the only way to uh, get in, unfortunately. Hello, young nail bender. About time you were coming home. Stokes been looking for you, and he ain't real happy. You better get in there right now. I like the gatekeeper just kind of leaves. I also like that all of these uh, blacksmiths are all doing the same thing. Well, it's about time, you lazy idiot! I sent you out four hours ago for firewood, and you bring me back one scrawny stick? If your father weren't the foreman, I'd toss you in the furnace. You're just like the used downstairs with the bishop right now. If that fire goes out and the cleric's swords don't get done... I'm sorry, I had a bit of trouble. Perhaps you'd like to offer your confessions to the bishop in person. I'd be happy to arrange it. Now give me that stick! I'm done dealing with the likes of you, Nailbender. I'll be back, and you'd better hope the furnace doesn't go out. What a mess. I can't do anything without my distaff. Oh no. 
It's locked. And me with no distaff. That straw looks awfully comfortable, though. Oh. I must have a sleep draft woven into it. Poor Rusty's body just really likes to be asleep. Imagine frightening a poor defenseless old thing like me. Cool. Well, I may not be much good with fire, love, like her but I still on fire. enjoy the taste of tender, firm, young meat. One blasted stick of wood left. Curse that lad. Ten thousand swords to forge, and the furnace is about as cold as my chances for promotion. I don't believe this. Real nice of that weaver kid. Just wait until his turn comes. I'll be waiting for him on the outside. Oh dear, that means trouble. If Elder Atropos saw his star feeding, so he'd have something to say about it. You, you could be sure of that. Careful now, old bird. Let's not singe the feathers. At least I'm back to looking like myself now. Magically, I'm awake. And through the open door we go. Eavesdropping on more conversations. The final blade is even now in the hands of our most skilled blade shaper, Your Excellency. How's it coming there, Edgewise? I'm just putting the edge on the last sword, sir. Good to hear it! No slacking off now! Let's get it finished! You'll share with me a historic moment, Foreman. The forging of the Ten Thousand Sword marks the end of our preparations. How much longer must I wait? The steel will ring out its final defeat, sir. Not much longer now. Very good, then. Carry on! Oh, where did it think? It might help to point at something. It's too noisy to spin any drafts in here. Seriously? Did I miss it? Edgewise? Is that blade not ready yet? His Excellency is still waiting! The metal is proud, sir. It does not yield easily to my blows. More sweat will soften it, I trust. It will be a blade to be reckoned with. The blade of reckoning? It does have a certain apocalyptic ring to it. I trust I will not be kept waiting much longer. Good metal rewards patience, exalted one. And our client rewards quick service. Now pound! It's about time he stopped. That hammering was making my head hurt. It might God help damn to point it. at <laughs> The final blade is even now in the hands of our most skilled blade shaper, Your Excellency. How's it coming there, Edgewise? I'm just putting the edge on the last sword, sir. Good to hear it! No slacking off now! 
Let's get it finished! You'll share with me a historic moment, Foreman. The forging of the Ten Thousand Sword marks the end of our preparations. How much longer must I wait? The steel will ring out its final defeat, sir. Not much longer now. Very good, then. Carry on! Thing, thing, thing. It's about time. There we go. God. What? What evil is this? A witch's curse has twisted the final blade. A curse, Edgewise? I think not. It would take more than a mere witch's curse to ruin my plans. You there! Could it be that this little prank is of your doing? Yes? Well then, I would be honored to have you as my guest at the cathedral. I know some other curses that may amuse you. I'm getting really tired of this. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bishop Mandible, trans-ultimate apostle of the anti-secular conclave of clerics. I know. Am I expected to kneel? Silence, you impudent punk! This is my assistant, Cobb. Charmed, I'm sure. And you require no introduction. Your cloak and staff betray your origins. But I must say I'm surprised to find you here. It's been quite a long time since any weaver bothered to leave that dreary little rock you call home. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> so provincial. I can't help but wonder what impelled you to leave it now. His Excellency asked you a question. I know. I'm ignoring it. Ah. Oh, the sass. Recalcitrance. I see. Shall I fetch the uh, instruments of persuasion, Master? Please forgive my assistant his eagerness. I fear Cobb is not very worldly. He does not understand the dangerous power of a weaver. Dangerous? Your reverence, him? Quite dangerous indeed, my dear Cobb. In fact, he could burst this flimsy iron cage open with hardly a second thought. That's impossible, most exalted one. I inspect the locks personally every fortnight. Observe and learn then, for even now your prisoner plans his escape. Yep. See, Cobb? An elusive breed, these weavers. Fortunately, however, they're quite helpless without their weaving sticks. That distaff will never work for you. Oh, no, my young friend, you're quite wrong about that. Come, let me show you why. Consider the common graveyard. There, the boundary between the living and the dead is indistinct. Every graveyard like that, so... Now, imagine what might happen if this delicate boundary were to be somehow breached. Torn open, so to speak. It's not that simple. You can't just rip the pattern apart like an old rag. But it is that simple, my boy, and I can. I have only to lift this rod, and the legions of the dead will stream forth onto the plain of the living. A vast army of the dead, nourished by the shepherd's flocks, armed by the artisanship of the blacksmiths, guided by the glassmaker's spear. All under the spiritual leadership of one supreme commander, me! It really is not that simple. The final hour is now at hand. The age of the clerics is upon us. I have preparations to attend to, Cobb. 
Don't let this boy out of your sight. He is to touch nothing. Do you understand me? <laughs> Perfectly, Your Excellence. Lord Mandible, ruler of the universe. Mm, I do like the sound of it. I'll have to change my station. Every good villain has to change stationery. You're not so dangerous now, then, are you? Keep away from that. His eminence said not to touch anything. I wasn't going to touch it. Just looking, Cobb. That's all. Just looking, eh? Well then, perhaps we can do a bit of a trade. How about sure. I let you look in the sphere if... <laughs> if... What? Well, the legends say that to gaze upon an uncloaked weaver brings death. Instant and agonizing. Actually, we clerics aren't given to such silly superstitions, but I'm curious. Let's answer this one once and for all, shall we? No! May we have some quiet, please? <laughs> I can't even begin to invoke the dead with all that screaming. Good. Well, he can't say he wasn't warned. And that's going to do it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe for more great content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.